time series data fitting a trend line. We are starting with no, seasonal, eh, no seasonality in our data. So we've got a table of the number of schools in Victoria and they've asked us to find the least squares trend line equation. So we should remember how to do this. Remembering, of course, stat and edit. Now I've got the data in for the number of schools, but just a reminder that you'll want to replace your date or whatever it is up here just with one, two, three, four, especially if it's months, you know, you don't want to type January. So it's common practice to just replace these um, with sequential numbers. And it can be a good idea to have a quick look at your graph, zoom 9. Now I've got this, a nice, obvious, fairly linear um, negative association between the year and the number of schools. So because it looks pretty linear, we can use a least squares line. Remember, check that diagnostic is on in the catalogue. Then stat calc, four for linreg. Um, yours will probably have th different spots to put L1, L2, and Y1. If you want to um, have a look at the line with your data, or you can just do L1 and L2. So I'll get L1 and L2 in. Yours will probably look a little different. Enter, and here is the equation of the line of best fit. So I've got negative 12.5 for my gradient and 2169 for the y-intercept. So y equals ax plus b. If we've used the graphics calculator, remember it's a good idea to write down the display. And then that would be y equals negative 12.5x plus 2169. So that's the equation of my line of best fit. To interpret the slope, since the slope was negative 12.5, that means that in this time period, on average, the school number of schools decreased by about 12.5 schools per year. If the trend continues, predict the number of schools in Victoria in 2015. Now just be aware, of course, that we can't just use 2015 because we do have to work out what number we've used for that. So easiest way is to go to the first year we've got that ends in the same number and then count on in tens. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So of course, 85, is it five? 95 will it be 15, 2005 at 25, 2015 will be at 35. So our x value is 35 for working this out. Then you can either go back to your graphics calculator, go to the table, I don't know why we've scrolled down all that far, and because we graphed the line. We, oh, I wanted 35, not 25. We can get to 35 and discover that we, ex that's not the right line. Normally, I would have done y1. And that would have put the equation of the line in here, but I left a different line in there. So, if you want to be doing that with the table, when you do stat calc, you're going to need to put in L1, 
L2, and then Y1 from the Y variables, and that would put the correct line in here, which would let me do the table and discover that at year 35, we'd have about 1,731 schools. So you can use the graphics calculator, if you remember how, Ms. McClintock, or you can use the line substitute in the value of x and type this into the calculator and work that out. So that's negative 12.5 times 35 plus 1731. And you would interpret that We would expect seven, 1,731 schools in Victoria in 2015. Remembering that where the question is, the number of schools in Victoria in 2015, is what your answer reads as. Remember that this is extrapolation, quite a fair way out from the data. And so if you had spare time in a test and wanted to comment, or if they asked about the validity of your result, you would say that it's extrapolation and we can't be sure this trend would continue that far outside our data.